Welcome. So for today's session, we are going to look at partial derivatives. So we'll start off the session with a quick recap of what we looked at in topic four, where we're basically talking about the rules of differentiation. So there are six rules that we concentrated on, which are the constant function rule, the linear function rule, where we also applied it to the rules of sums and differences. We also looked at the power function rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and lastly, the chain rule. All right. So the six um, rules of differentiation, we applied them to single variable functions. By single, single variable function, we are basically saying we are allowing our dependent variable y to be explained by only one function or one variable, sorry. And in this instance, we mostly were looking at functions with um, x as the explanatory variable. And we also applied the rules of differentiation to economic examples, like when we are calculating marginal effects from either our total function, total cost function, or our total revenue function. So we we'll see that to calculate your marginal cost, for example, you had to differentiate the total cost with respect to Q. Or to calculate your marginal revenue, you have to differentiate your total revenue with respect to Q. So moving on, so we're going now to look at partial differentiation. With partial differentiation, what we're basically saying is we are allowing our function Y to be explained by more than one independent variable, right? So in essence, we are saying the endogenous variable Y can be influenced to change if more than one exogenous variable actually changes, right? So your y, if you have put it in an equation, it becomes a function of more than one. So as an example, we have here y being explained by x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn. And all these are different um, exogenous variables or independent variables. One key assumption in such functions is that your x1 and your x2, they have to be unrelated. Same applies with x2 and x3, x3 and x4 up to xn. All the individual exogenous variables or independent variables are not related, right? Simply meaning that when x2 changes, it doesn't cause x1 to change. Or when x4 changes, it will not cause x3 to change or x1 or x2 to change. But if x1 or x2 changes, these are going to cause your y to change, right? So when we want to investigate the effect of a change in x, right, be it x1 or x2 up to xn, what we have to calculate is a partial derivative, right? In a single variable function, when we're investigating the effect of a change in x, what we're cal calculating was the total derivative. And we denoted that using the letter D, right? DY, DX, um, simply meaning a total differential, different, sorry, a total derivative of Y with respect to X. But when we are calculating the partial derivative, we use a rounded D, right? Which is a symbol for a partial derivative. So we are saying we are finding the partial derivative of Y with respect to one of the exogenous variables or one of the independent variables. In this case, it can be your x1 or x2, whilst you are holding all the other exogenous variables constant. Right? So to simplify or to solve that, you still have to apply your rules of differentiation. So your constant rule, your linear rule, your product rule, quotient rule, as well as